for Elmwood Transcona. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to have this opportunity today to take part in this important discussion on the outbreak of Ebola in West Africa and a response both at home and abroad. I'd first like to highlight that there are no confirmed cases of Ebola in Canada, but Canada must be prepared for a case to come here. Provincial and local health officials are the lead on any Ebola case in Canada, but the Public Health Agency of Canada continues to assist them to ensure that they remain prepared. We have five Ebola rapid response teams in place, which include lab expertise, which can quickly confirm diagnosis, and emergency supplies from our national strategic stockpile, such as masks, gloves, and gowns. These rapid response teams would support the provincial and territorial authorities in the response should a case of Ebola occur. Technical guidance and protocols have also been shared with provinces and territories and with the transportation sector to detect and manage suspected cases of Ebola infection. Frontline staff have been trained to screen international travel travelers arriving in Canada for communicable diseases and to refer any travelers suspected of being ill to quarantine officers. However, I'd like to focus my remarks today on the availability of vaccines to prevent and combat Ebola, and more specifically, the government's role in the regulation of vaccines. A safe and effective vaccine would be an extremely important public health tool to help prevent Ebola and help prevent or contain future outbreaks. Indeed, Canadian scientists at the Public Health Agency National Microbiology Lab in Winnipeg invented an experimental Ebola vaccine that has shown great promise. And I'm very pleased to see that Canada is making up to 1,000 vials of this vaccine available to the World Health Organization, as they are best suited to determine how and where they can be deployed as safely, quickly, and as ethically as possible. On the home front, I'd like to talk about Health Canada's role as a regulator of vaccines, what it does, and how cooperation with our international partners is beneficial and vital. And most importantly, how the process would work should some of this experimental Canadian vaccine need to be used on compassionate grounds within Canada. Canada, like many other countries worldwide, exercises tight regulatory oversight over all vaccines because they are usually given to very large numbers of healthy individuals to help prevent disease. All vaccines made available to Canadians are subject to a strict approval process, which is conducted by Health Canada. Health Canada is the national authority responsible for evaluating the quality, safety, and efficacy of vaccines for human use in Canada. Prior to the approval of a new vaccine, the manufacturer must file a submission with scientific and clinical evidence that demonstrates that the vaccine's health benefits outweigh the risks and that the vaccine is effective and of a suitable quality for Canadians. Clinical trials which take place in Canada must also be approved by Health Canada prior to their commencement. However, it is not necessary for trials to be conducted in Canada in order for a vaccine to eventually be authorized here. Adherence to the internationally accepted standards of good clinical practice helps ensure that clinical trials conducted in other countries meet the high standards of evidence needed to support authorization in Canada. With clinical trials, the issue is the quality of the science, not where the science is done. This is especially important in the context of the current Ebola outbreak, as the supplies of investigational products are extremely limited. Furthermore, as part of the overall approval process, Health Canada conducts an evaluation of the manufacturer's facilities to assess the quality of the vaccine manufacturing process and to determine that the manufacturer is able to carry out the necessary quality controls for the vaccine. The manufacturer must also provide samples of the vaccine for testing in Health Canada laboratories. After Health Canada's evaluation, if the conclusion is that the benefits of the vaccine outweigh any potential risks, then the vaccine is granted market authorization and can be sold in Canada. After approval, Health Canada continues its regulatory oversight by conducting a lot, a lot release program and regular inspections of the manufacturer's facilities to make sure that best practices for drug manufacturing are being followed. Potential adverse events associated with the vaccine are monitored by Health Canada 
and the Public Health Agency of Canada through active and passive surveillance systems. Mr. Speaker, the Ebola outbreak in West Africa is a global issue that requires a collaborative international response. Health Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada are working in close collaboration with other national regulatory and public health authorities to respond. Ebola vaccines under consideration are at an early investigational stage of development. There are no approved interventions available at this time. Vaccines are only now starting to be evaluated for safety or efficacy in human trials for the prevention of Ebola. In addition, supplies are currently extremely limited. As I mentioned earlier, Canada has donated doses of our experimental Ebola vaccine, originally developed by the Public Health Agency of Canada, to the World Health Organization to help respond to the outbreak. While many of the potential vaccines and therapies for Ebola have shown promising results from animal studies, evaluation in humans is necessary to confirm that these benefits are also seen in humans and that benefits outweigh the risks. This is a critical component of product development and approval. Accelerating the development and approval of Ebola vaccines requires a concerted effort by many different players, including product manufacturers, regulatory authorities, and the World Health Organization. Mr. Speaker, there should also be balance between the need to provide access to Ebola vaccines in a timely manner and the need to gather as much information as we can on vaccine quality, safety, and effectiveness. Health Canada is a member of the International Coalition of Medicines Regulatory Authorities. In September, the members of this coalition jointly released a statement on international regulatory cooperation regarding Ebola. Participating regulatory authorities pledged to join their expertise and enhance collaboration to help accelerate access to investigational products. Some of the challenges that regulatory authorities worldwide are dealing with include how to help accelerate the development and regulatory approval of Ebola vaccines and therapies, how to facilitate access to those most in need in the affected countries, and how to ensure that data on the quality, safety, and effectiveness of the vaccines are available as quickly as possible for decision making. All of this should be done without compromising the regulatory system in place to protect the health and safety of vaccine recipients. These efforts are being led by the WHO, to whom we have donated a significant portion of our vaccine stockpile. In addition, Health Canada is collaborating specifically with other national regulatory authorities to harmonize the data requirements on the quality, safety and efficacy of the vaccines that would be required for approval. This work is of benefit to decision makers in the affected countries in Africa as well as to Canadians. Most importantly, there is a global commitment amongst regulatory authorities to share clinical and safety data on candidate Ebola vaccines in real time. This enables countries to maximize the amount of data available to support vaccine assessment and approval and rapidly share any information on potential adverse events following immunization. This has already started happening and is expected to help inform vaccine policy decisions worldwide. Health Canada is also a member of the African Vaccine Regulatory Forum, which is a World Health Organization initiative aimed at strengthening vaccine regulatory capacity for national regulatory authorities in Africa. Representatives from 19 African countries con constitute the membership. Health Canada is using this network to provide assistance and regulatory advice to regulatory authorities in the affected African <coughs> countries. Canada is also preparing in the event a Canadian needs access to a treatment or vaccine for Ebola. Health Canada has regulatory options available that will accelerate the approval process if needed to ensure the health and safety of Canadians. Let me conclude by saying that the health and safety of Canadians is paramount. Health Canada as regulator is working collaboratively with its national and international partners and the World Health Organization to support product development and facilitate regulatory evaluation of Ebola vaccines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Honourable Member for Etobicoke North. 
Mr. Speaker, I'd like to thank my honourable colleague for the speech. The UN mission responsible for Ebola response, or UNMIR, says the number of infected are growing exponentially each day and that new caseloads of approximately 10,000 per week are possible by December 1st, meaning they need 7,000 beds for treatment. Unfortunately, the UN mission is expected to have only 4,300 beds in treatment centres by that date. More difficult still, there are no staff to operate them under current plans. The World Health Organization has been calling for more health care workers in West Africa. Canadians on the ground are calling for more personnel. But Canada, would, Canada obviously would have a duty to ensure proper medical evacuation of any of their citizens. Is the government considering more personnel and what exploration is the government taking with respect to evacuation? The Honourable Member for Elman Transcona. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague uh, for her question. And of course, the safety of Canadians is paramount. Uh, we talk about the safety of Canadians here in Canada regarding the Ebola crisis and should it come to Canada. Fortunately, it has not at this time. But we also must be aware of the safety of Canadians, uh, as my colleague has mentioned, safety of the Canadians that would be deployed to Africa and to make sure that we have ways of uh, getting them out, out of the uh, area if they do contract uh, the Ebola virus. We need to be able to get them out of that area. We also need to have the proper safety measures in place for them as they do their work there. So those will be things that we continue to work on as a government to make sure that our safety and the protection of Canadian citizens that are working in West Africa is also paramount as much as the safety uh, of the Canadi Canadians here on Canadian soil is paramount to us.